is different from nanomedicine. So articles and presentations, both of them are intended to inform and convince others. But usually describe the topic to this, that there is there are two major differences. One of them is that an article is a text dominated and the graphic aided, and the presentation is graphic dominated and text aided. It could be, uh, the first could be very technical. So, because the audience could go back and read it again and again if they need it, if they read it. And if they downloaded it, then they maybe read it. The presentation is good for any audience. It makes a one-time impression. You, there is an optimal amount. Too much is too much. Too much is worse than too little. And then because you lose your audience once during any presentation. If they, later, they, if, even if they wake up, then they don't really can, they can't really follow you. So, and the bottom it says that hearsay and accidental observations. We all came to this building, uh, to this lecture hall this morning. We've met hundreds of people. So why don't we remember them? Do you remember your friends you've met on the way? Do you remember an accident? Probably yes. And the reason is that they, all those people were not connected to you. We don't understand you. Do you understand your friends much better? Of course, because you were connected to them multiple times. So, but all science is based on data. But, but it's a, 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 a very important to remember that the connectedness increases understanding. Multiple times you see, you understand. So let's observe and measure. Data are always numbers. There is a huge difference between observation and measurement. And I can I'll give you a talk and say that you can see that the lines are bent in the middle. Actually, it's not true. If you focus on one, there's a perfectly parallel lines. But it's very easy to just to superficially convince and say anybody, oh, you can see it. You can see the cells are changing from blue to red or green and blue. No, data are numbers. And they have to be measured, they have to be interpreted. So don't just observe, measure all the time. So once we start understanding the relations between data that creates information, data do not convince everybody or anybody. Data are data. Data, remember, that's just numbers. I can show you my numbers and you say, okay, so what? Information that uh, changes uh, uh, and understanding the relations between your data changes that. You study a system, you use different methods. Those methods have individual data. Those have relations, and these methods are the supporting or contradicting each other. Uh, a good example is how, low, how, how big a nanoparticle is, what's its size? Well, it depends what kind of method measurement you use. What method did you use? A TEM will not be as the same as DLS, and why? You need to understand. So understanding patterns between this information creates knowledge. And understanding, everybody has some kind of knowledge, and everybody has a certain type of knowledge, so we're all different. That, that has two consequences. Number one, you can learn from anybody, anytime. Even the simplest guy on the street has something you don't know, or you don't know, don't do so well. And the second, understanding principles make you not just knowledge. If knowledge would be the, the best, the biggest thing in the world, then the uh, librarians would be the smartest people, but they are not. We say intelligent people, smart people, creative people, wise people. Well, are those different? Of course. Are those, all, those are all different. The difference is understanding of principles, which really creates a type of wisdom, <laughs> in English at least there's a word for it, which allows us to take intelligent actions. And we all take actions every time, all the time, every day and every, every single, uh, every other moment. Uh, but humans are the creatures of habit. We do repeat things that we, that were, we think they were successful. So uh, taking off the road, making, which is essentially scientists do, it's not as trivial as it looks like. What the, taking intelligent actions allows you it, to simplify complexity. 
Could it be more simple? I don't think so. Actually, that's why I uh, started a new manuscript in a company. That's why I chose the MC Square for it. Could not be more simple. But how hard was the road to that? To simplify that knowledge and again, then you go back and get back to the relativity theory and go back to the details and the measurements and the data and the pieces of information gets worse and worse. I'm sure every student had, um, we all had in our life moments when you were sitting in front of the exam with a, with a thick book in your hand and said, I'm never going to learn this. I, it's just not possible. You know why? Because there's our data and information. That is not knowledge. Can you read and write? Yes. Do you remember in elementary school how did you learn reading and writing? No, not at all. But you have the knowledge and have the skill. And the data, you can look it up. And if pieces of information, why are exactly the etymology of words, you can look it up. So what simplifying complexity allows us makes qualitative predictions possible. So knowledge is not a, 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 a steady and a solid block. The knowledge is always improving, it changes back and forth, and we add and subtract uh, <clears throat> things from that. But if until we make, cannot make quantitative predictions, like in engineering calculations, that's we call basic science. All right. So what I want you to remember is that the essence is simple. Only the details are complicated. You dig deeper, it gets more complicated. You dig deeper, but you, you understand the patterns and the principles more, it suddenly becomes simple. <coughs> Has a well, the excellent example that doxyl is not working in cell cultures. Yeah, because the mechanism, oh, it's ammonia. How simple is that? And how long was the road to just to recognize what is what's going on? So the cycle of scientific research requires all of these. To better understand principles, we create a hypothesis and then plan and run experiments to gather data by measurements, analyze the data to understand relations, to create information that we use to convince others and to see how this knowledge fits, this new piece of knowledge like today, the exosome, how does it fit into our system, our knowledge system? to form a new type of knowledge and then share this information and knowledge to come on, <coughs> to contribute to common knowledge. And then it starts all over. It starts in order to better understand the principles and change the course of future actions, different experiments and round, round and round. And I can say, that's my personal opinion, that no research is ever finished. It just runs out money or time. Because you always can get deeper. So, the role of a publication to share information and knowledge to improve common knowledge. So there are always gaps in our wisdom. We don't know everything. We will never know everything. It's not possible. But I have a way that I think that the way, I think that's the way it works. It's what we call hypothesis. Then, so we plan and perform experiments, sometimes just because we are curious, sometimes other times because we want to check something to gather data and we say some there are good data and bad data in my opinion good data are the ones that can be reproduced can be repeated they give a, always lead to, and bad data are that cannot be reproduced this is in completely independent from the fact whether we understand them whether we can fit them into the system or existing system of knowledge or we cannot so then what we what, what have to do share it somehow so we start describing with an introduction what is known. I, I go back to the title and I abstract that in a moment. What is known? And then we share our experimental plan. How did we carry it out? What materials, methods, and the conditions we used? Why? Because other people should be able to repeat those experiments and convince themselves that, yes, it works the way it, that the guy says. You don't want to project uncertainty that, oh, yeah, I read this paper, we tried, but they couldn't reproduce his data. Oh, well, it's not really a contribution. So they, they say that the materials, methods, conditions, 
Then you describe your data, that's the results. That you, you discuss them to show the relations between them, to transform into information. And then create a piece of new knowledge by understanding the patterns between your data. And then the whole thing starts all over. And research articles most of them come in this area. So it's a data, information, knowledge. They tell us what is known, they tell us how the new thing was done, and draw some conclusions, draw conclusions. Reviews are at one level higher, at least they should be. Good reviews always are one level higher. It's easy to run a literature search by anybody, but the question is, can you understand pattern and the principles when you are writing your review? Because that's what it should be. So, Take all the information is known. You don't generate new knowledge, new data during a review. But take all the knowledge and see how what the patterns are and what the principles are and how what should we know in 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 uh, what should be aware of, how they could contribute to common knowledge. So again, well, <coughs> what I just repeat what I would like you to remember: the essence is simple. Only the details are complicated. Based on measurement, data, information, knowledge, taking intelligent action, and simplify complexity. The significance, the significant, how do you publish your article? Do you know this person? I think some of my former students, they do because I showed it in a year ago. Maybe they don't even remember. The person is Alexander Emil de Grier de Chancortois. And in 1862, he was a famous geologist who presented a paper to the French Academy of Sciences, which paper was then published in the Society paper journal Comprendi. And the paper, however, the concept that elements has some kind of relations to each other was poorly described and very difficult to understand. So the di this diagram. See, it's a real lithium, barium, carbon, sand, carbon, carbon. It would have made the Shankar ideas much clearer and could have made his name forever famous. It was omitted from his paper, even though it did uh, later this appeared in a geological pamphlet. But chemists don't read geologist journals. Why would they? They didn't read at that time, they don't read now. So they, were, they, underst but they understood Mendeleev stable in a different uh, way of presentation, the same concept, which actually came later and uh, had become a periodic table. So, okay, but where shall I publish? Well, first you only need to consider read readership. Who do you want to you know? There are many reasons to publish something. There are shared information you need for your, your grant. You need to... Uh, 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 you want to get out of school and just uh, because I, for PhD, my PhD I need three papers. Many reasons. There could be many reasons. But what do you do is you identify the most relevant journals by scope. So you need to know what do you want to do. Read the mission statement and, and pick the three most influential ones. Download and read the author instructions and templates if any. Very important. I've all, all the time I meet people who never ever read the author instructions and they, so, then they are surprised that the paper is uh, just, manuscript is just thrown back. Talk to the editors, please. These are also people that have a question, ask. So simple. However, only you can decide because the selection may depend on the status of your career. Are you a student? Are you a postdoc? Are you a junior faculty before tenure or a senior faculty with a senior professor and so on? And what's your goal? It differs. Should you go after the highest impact factor or should you consider the most influential ones? I will talk about these measures uh, at the ISNM meeting. Or consider readership. Well, the first two seems to be uh, more, uh, simple, so let's consider readership. So you wish to publish your paper in a prestigious journal and get many citations. To achieve this goal, you need readers. If people don't read your papers, they're certainly not going to refer to it. So we usually also prefer to not to lose, quote-unquote, a lot of time writing a manuscript. 
Uh, let me make uh, just uh, one simple comment. Writing a manuscript, it's not a lot of time. It, it must, it forces you to think it over, to group, to put it in the logical order, whether you like it or not. It's a lot of work, oh yes. But it's a very, very positive thing. Send it to the right journal, get good reviews, get accepted quickly and publish it in a short time, which is usually not up to you. So to achieve all these goals, you need readers. So. Don't forget that someone pays for your publication. Either you pay for it, or your institution pays for it, or you buy it uh, article by article. There are many models how to, but someone pays. There is nothing free. So what do people buy? People buy things what they need, what they find interesting, what is beautiful, at least good looking, girls, would you buy would you buy an ugly skirt or an ugly t shirt? I don't think so. What is easy to get or free? So what do you read? What do you? What do you read? What is useful for you? What you find interesting? What is good looking? So projects thoroughness and paying attention to details if it looks good. What is simple to read and easy to understand? These are the principles. It's easy to remember because the way you read papers of others is the way others read your paper. So most people read the title, then they decide, continue with the abstract, yes or no. Then you read the abstract. It's usually these two elements, even they put a graphical abstract, are on the website. Then you decide, continue with downloading the paper, yes or no. They don't, the people download much more than they read. Or as a, uh, as a, uh, to, to confirm that, if you walk in any of the professor's room, uh, older meaning that not the PDF, they're not storing the PDF on their computer as now, but they had to be printed out and that you will see, you will see towers of printed papers everywhere. You know what is that? That's the category. I will read it when I have time. You will never read it. They will never read it ever. Because nobody has time. Time is more and more precious. Not less than more and more we get, more and more precious. So that then you look at the figures and maybe the conclusions. Uh, figures, I'll mention uh, again a little bit more. The figures are data and correlations and illustrations. Again, decide yes or no, then you read only the body of the paper and you decide again, continue or read or no, that the supporting material if you want to reproduce the results. So the number of people reading what you did, less and less and less, it's continuously going down. So the purpose is, <coughs> the intention is, you, that we cannot change the size of the research area we are in, especially in new research areas. There are not too many people, but those are the most interested ones usually. And in general, broader, older areas, there are much more people, but they are much less interested and there are so many things to read and download. So, you shouldn't decide whether the reader would should continue or should not continue. Let them decide. Just they let you decide. This is my definition. Scientific manuscript is a simple, logical, and systematic description of complicated things. And not a complicated, illogical, and random description of simple things, which you see often time. For various reasons. So the, the, these are again the principles. Don't forget that articles are written for others and not for yourself. Have a good story, keep it simple to read, easy to understand, plus make it good looking. Explain how it is useful for others. You write your manuscript, you have a half a year at least. The, your reader have five seconds. Explain it, Ex tell, tell others how it is useful for the others. Your reader knows only as much as you have taught him or her. It's not easy because whoever writes, everything is in your head, in your, in your, uh, on your computer. You think about it continuously. So you assume that what you know, others don't know. They don't. 
Someone is trying to reproduce her work is a potential collaborator, provide all the necessary experimental details, scientific collaboration, international uh, collaboration is getting more and more and more important. Let them be your collaborators. The paper uh, should move the field forward. Yes. So the basic, basic process, how can a student remember all these details? Very simple. Imagine you're telling a story to people about your trip to an interesting place. First, put, put together a photo album. You took pictures, you took data. Find the best way to show them. Tell us. Why did you go there? That's the motivation hypothesis. Who were there before? What did they see? How did they get there? It's a background. How did you get there? That's your materials, materials and experimental plan. What happened? Observations, measurements. What do you think all about this? That's your discussion. What is your advice for us and for the future? Shall I go or shall I not? That's the conclusions. And the, at the very end, of course, just for simple reasons, don't forget to thank those who make your trip possible in the acknowledgement. So the title. Title is the first thing that the reader will see, and this will determine whether they will read further. It also sets expectations. That is a very important. That's why it is read. It sets expectation. We judgment. We make judgments by expectation. If you ex expect something and you get better, you're happy. If you expect something and you don't get it, you are not happy at all. But interestingly, for humans or for people, the relative plus or minus is compared to expectations. That's why it is possible to be happy in a simple home and very unhappy in the Hilton or Park Plaza, for such matter. So it sets expectations. The title needs to encapsulate the subject of article and try to be, make it more, more interesting and inclusive. I, I show examples to uh, uh, support this. Hint. Start writing by defining the topic and leave the title as the very last one thing you ever write. To capture the attention of your audience. These are good titles, in my opinion. Nanomedicine and nanotoxicology, two sides of the same coin. Who will be interested? People in nanomedicine, people in tox, and people who are uh, at least touching on one of them. This is a good title, too. It's a different readership. TNF often cancer treatment, molecular insight, anti-tumor effects, and clinical utility. It includes the, research, the exact topic, the treatment, the clinical, and the researchers. And this is also a good title. It's just a much smaller audience. It's an expert audience, but a specific synthesis, how do you do that, and how it is maybe useful for in the future for anti -tumor. So can you tell me what's the difference between these four titles? Quantum death nanoparticle for optimization of breast cancer diagnostic and therapy in the clinical setting. So we tend to consider the first part of it. Remember always the beginning at the end, birth and death. Whatever is, whatever is in the front, we kind of unconsciously we consider it more important. So this is the quantum dot nanoparticle. Here is the essence of the optimization of breast cancer diagnostics. Different readership. Hmm? Clinical optimization of breast cancer. Again, a different readership. And quantum dot nanoparticle for breast cancer diagnosis therapy. No clinical. So that's just researchers. Bad titles. Just a few, so you don't remember too many. Do endothelial cells dream of eclectic shape? It's very poetic, but it's, it's as, as uh, ridiculous as it is. Another one. Heat assisted amplification of plasmic circle, dichroism in dynamic one and another one of surfact and bioidea mediated carotid transfer. Who's going to read this? Uh, by first reaction, what? Or Engineering design of functional as molybdenum sulfide sheets for image guided targeting therapy of drug resistant MCF7 cancer. The focus is on engineering design. Engineers, not too many engineers that work on a drug resistant cancer area. So you are excluding people from, from reading further. 
abstract. That's at least really the preview, and they, that's again a decision point whether they want to read in Beth or read that. But it should be, therefore, it should be a little less technical. Remember, title, abstract. Should be a little less technical than the article itself. You don't want to scare away your potential audience. Then in the body, you have to get it technical as it is. That should be one paragraph, usually up to 250. Three, maximum 300 words to summarize purpose, methods, and conclusions of the paper. It should stand alone, no abbrevi avoid abbreviations and no citations or footnotes. If these two, two, plus your keywords, they go to databases, and that's how you search, that's what you search, and that's what other people search. So make sure that uh, your keywords reflect what have you done. If, well, those people who want to find something, they find you at the end, not somebody else. Introduction, I mentioned, summarize it with relevant literature. I emphasize relevant, not everything, it's not possible. One to four paragraphs said, what's the need? What's the significance? Again, tell us. What is your hypothesis? Experimental plan. And uh, specific goals. These are technically how to use it. The describe your hypothesis and model. What's your plan? Justify your methods. Uh, justification cannot be, oh, we had these models in the lab. It was close. Uh, there has to be a scientific reason. What animal care, a soul. What there is methods. It gets more simple because it's, uh, it uh, is uh, getting more and more technical. And that's usually that's uh, the least of the problem. There should be enough information to understand your and repeat your experiment with the details going to the supporting information. Do not put results in this section. Results are data. That's your result. Mention relevant ethical considerations. Result. That's where you present your data and summarize your main findings in the test. Use graphs, tables, and so on. I'll show you just an example. Do not, usually don't discuss. Why not? Because uh, your audience need to know your data before they can discuss them. Because if they, you have to turn them into information. Information can be discussed, data cannot. Data are measured, either I believe it is or I don't believe it. That's, if, that's a different issue. So you use the right methods, tables and graphs. It's very useful to prepare first a presentation. Now, think first what exactly you want to do. Show data, compare trends, functions, contrast views, and so on. What's the best way? Include a title always. Uh, don't use just for the sake of using uh, something beautiful. Elements of figures, data, and I should say numbers, 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 numbers. Extracted from illustrations and photographs and all the others. Because you don't see what is happening here. You see colors only. It may be even artificial colors. That does not convince your audience. Now, this is uh, the relations of, uh, of uh, two different sets of data. This is a, the general structure being always named the topic, does the start that A, this and that. What is it all about? Methods, experimental condition, and I recommend to add the one sentence conclusion. Especially uh, large uh, and famous magazines, now this is a recent trend that captions have become like a small article. They describe them, there are no them, and nobody reads those things. You read the first sentence, what is it all about, and the last sentence. Don't tell me that while you are scanning through to decide whether you read the paper, you read what's in the figure, you don't. But helping the reader, again, help the reader to think what, what that data, what that information says you. That uh, this is narrow, that this is expanded. It's same thing, but you give it a little meaning. Discussion is actually converts your data into information. Though conclusions, high level <coughs> significance, there are supportive hypotheses, what else would be necessary, how do your results fit into the big picture? And uh, definitely in the uh, next part and the conclusions, how, what is the new piece of knowledge? And uh, I would recommend do not overstate what, what you've been done. Every little piece, so you don't know, 
Actually, it takes about five to 10 years to find out whether is that piece is significant or not. It might be a very important, it might be small. We don't know, and it's not up to us all the time. We just do our best. Closing acknowledgements, thank for funding. Otherwise, next time you may not get it. Uh, fund managers, uh, project managers have to report how many publications were given out from that money they gave out. So you want to be on that list. References, acknowledge the source, and so on. Supplementary materials, details. The five phases. First, identify a topic. What is your story? and then just write down everything on your mind. Don't, don't put it in any kind of format. Just, just put it down, get it on paper. Start riding your bicycle. Create pieces of information, try to find them. Now version two, now by that time you should have downloaded and this make a decision what journal you're considering. Read the, their author uh, instructions, not instructions, instructions. <laughs> And uh, there are limitations, but and transfer that version one into that format. Don't care about limitations yet. They just group them accordingly and logically. Then number three, edit your look at uh, edit your language. Look whether it is right. Did you say what uh, what you meant to say? Because you often remember much better what we're about to say and not what we actually say. Apply style and limitation in first one. Number four, that's usually is shortening, or oh, I realize I have more room and then I go. And then the next is a refined style. Make it simple to read, easy to understand. Easy to say that, but how? So major part of any writing is rewriting. First of all, write accurately. Scientific writing must be accurate. Many Asian languages are very, um, the context is more important than the, than the precise structure. So that's kind of poetic. But if you translate it into English, it sounds like BS. I'm sorry, that's, that's what it is. So be careful. Uh, English is a very precise structure language. You have to have, uh, and you make mistakes. Everybody make mistakes. I make mistakes. I, I, during this presentation, I made several mistakes. But, but fix that. Not fixing is, that's the real problem. Everybody makes mistakes all the time. Use thesaurus, the best word, and do not use words you don't know. Make sure you say what you mean. For example, the rats were injected with the drug. It sounds like for an English native speaker, it sounds like that you ground up the rats and the drugs and then put them together and inject it together. But they don't tell you ever. This is fine. Use uh, short cockeyes terms by, by before, because, often, most, when, during the time that, say just when, when we did that. Make it simple to read. Use short sentences. If a sentence is too long, it's probably not, not right. One sentence, one thought, one paragraph, one subtopic. Use verbs, use strong verbs, uh, short words, possess, it's a very fancy. Sufficient is enough. Utilize use and show and so on. Uh, don't I know that many uh, language advisors said, "Oh, make your language, make your grammar, make your words more colorful. Use different synonyms." But this is yes, it generally is true. But this is science. Be just use the same word if it precisely describes what it is. Just use it. It doesn't have to be. It's not entertainment. Primary. Don't uh, spatch a in attack with my scientific terms. Have someone to proofread, which is uh, in uh, because again, we remember much better what we wanted to read, what we wanted to write, and not that we actually wrote. Don't use words if you're not sure about their meaning. Use active voice, first person, don't, don't be afraid of that. Now, what's in, uh, important in Asia? Avoid words projecting uncertainty. These are some, approximately, almost about. When you say, oh, we run some experiments that, to me, that says that, although I'm not a native English speaker, native English is my third language, I just learned it. <coughs> it's so, it, uh, it projects that you have no idea what did you do. 
some experiments, it's uncomfortable, it's uncertain. Don't, you don't want your scientific work sound uncomfortable and uncertain. Approximately, almost about data, numbers, logic, knowledge, information, facts and measurements. Typical mistakes, just a few. Avoid using tests that don't carry information generally known as blah, 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 blah. The, the, this area has generated uh, increasing interest in, within the scientists because of their biomedical applications. But it is say nothing. You, you used 20 words out of the 5,000. So project uncertainty, I just mentioned, may result in generalization. Be very careful, like a nanoparticle. This particle is a solid piece of material with a permanent shape. A micelle is not a particle. A micelle is a micelle. Uh, it has particle properties like size and shape and size distribution and so on, but it's not a particle by definition. Successfully, significantly, obviously, about, approximately the same thing. Be specific, say, if you can say it was 20 degrees C, don't say it's about 20 degrees C. It reflects bad on your experimental conditions. Cure cancer. I don't have to explain that. Blurring the border between clinical use and research topics. ABCD has been uh, successfully applied in the area of whatever. No. There are very few, actually, very few nanomedicines which have been in clinical because you need a product. You get from, that's, that's okay doing research, but don't try to say that it's all the clinical incredibly important. Cell receptors. Cell, cell receptors or any kind of receptors can only be targeted in vivo. There is no such a thing as in vitro targeting. In, in vitro binding or equivalent words. Emphasizing only the positive aspects. There are always limits. We didn't do things or we cannot do things. It's better if it comes from you than if it comes from the reviewers. And asking you, so why don't you tell us about X, Y, Z? Neglecting system characteristics. Uh, gold nanoparticles, there's no such a thing in, in, an, in an experiment. There is a gold, there is a surface, there is a corona, there is a condition, there is a cell uh, culture or the kind of, uh, kind of uh, model you choose and so on. And then the finally, lousy characterization of the nano component. I've seen so many articles with very thorough biological characterization of, of very lousy, without really knowing what, a, what on earth it was done with. So there is always a limit what we can do and what we know, but at least those, put, the, put out those. Avoid it. You talk about what you have done instead of telling a story. People are not interested in what you have done in the lab. You are interested, your supervisor is interested in talking to the students, uh, interested in your grand manager, interested in what, the, what you're doing in the, uh, what the but readers into, uh, need a story. You tell all what you have done, typical student mistake. Again, nobody cares. Don't do that. Just no justification. Too much is in one figure, it's called chart jump. People when look, they don't listen. People when read, they don't listen. And it's very bad during presentations because again, you lose your audience only once. So look at these, these huge graphs, they just prove one thing, but I come away with the conclusion, oh, this guy worked a lot. But what did he or she do? No idea. Incomplete figures, no experimental information, observation is not information. And you can see that, no, I cannot, show me. Conclusion, too much general sale talks, <laughs> not specific. So a few words about the editorial process. There are always three things, format, content, language. The format is uh, usually de precisely uh, determined by the journal and it's on the website. So when a your paper, your manuscript arrives at an editor office, a few things happen. Managing editor, someone at the staff, reviews paper for formal requirements and sends it back until passing. So you need to read the author instructions. I know it's long, I know it's boring, but it's long because everything is there in it. Then EIC rejects or considers the manuscript, assigns it to an associate editor and then invite peer reviewers. So the formal check, 
Uh, some usually somebody at the step. EIC doesn't even see it before before this passes the formal. So is there like a formatting correct the, the, the appropriate required parts or figures of sufficient quality? Has everything been uploaded? If it's not, it just goes back automatically. And it may take a month or maybe two months. You don't want to do that. It's easier to do it before. So what does an EIC do? Check the appropriate for a journal. Is the topic relevant to the scope? There are journals with scope, there are journals with no scope. I'll talk about it uh, Friday. Is the topic original, significant, novel, or does it have scientific merit? In other words, does it contribute to existing knowledge? This is how I see your manuscript. Uh, we're after running uh, the cross-check, the identicate, the company name identicate uh, software. This is an actual manuscript. Everything phrases come out color coded, so I can tell that it was for, taken as a marker dead as 4% of the total, and as 3%, 3%, 3%, and so on, was taken here and there. Now this happens, and the, uh, the repetitive part is 58%. Well, this happens to be a review article, so it's okay. It just raises a flag that only human eye and human brain can decide. It just raises a flag that maybe you should look at that. It's, is it a, if it's an original article, it's definitely not an original article. So don't just copy. Sentences, paragraphs without referring to it. And acknowledge citation sources. Rules of rejection without review. Out of scope, I mentioned that. Too preliminary. Observation is not knowledge. It's very interesting observation. It's intriguing observation, but it's not knowledge yet. You have to have at least, uh, in my philosophy, at least a hypothesis why it is that way. Just saying that we don't know, but it's very important, that's not going to cut it. Lack of novelty, that's easy. Lack of quantitative data, again, blah, 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 blah. Not using correct models, lack of statistics, irreproducible. Uh, that usually because of the lack of the data, there's not enough data. Just write down everything that allows another person to repeat it. Plagiarism, very rare that happens. Oops, that's not job. Peer review, that's the next step. Only, so who are the peers? We are. We are all. We are all the authors and all the peers. And uh, someone, sometimes this guy stands here and sometimes the other one. So let's not make it feel like that. The, the purpose of the peer review is to ask questions to make it better, make a manuscript better, or first to see that whether it has a scientific merit. Is it the, in other words, does it contribute to the general knowledge of the new piece? So peer review comes with editors and reviewers. Editors are dedicated but very busy. They have a deep expertise and sometimes partial expertise. They invite reviewers. Uh, on occasion, they have marginal expertise, they have more reviewers. And uh, usually reviewers more available with lesser expertise, by corresponding author is the ones with the most expertise. Uh, the, the guy who did the research, who uh, did the lion's share of the research. So that's uh, one of the reasons of uh, being unsatisfied. Although we did do everything in our uh, power to not to have to postdoc review uh, a research director's paper. Uh, the motivation, time, and expertise, as I mentioned. Everybody has a, a second life. I mean, a first life, rather. That there's a grant, a manuscript writing, and academic duties, and preliminary company, and travel, and, and just simply life. It's not, nobody's in the professional peer reviewer. Now, often authors are reviewers, are reviewers, authors, and often, often provide less than optimal information. That's the purpose. Find out what else needs to be added. Average level of reviewers is lower. So, as you say, the critics are advisements only. A peer review is, a, is a, not a, an imperfect thing that uh, they just don't have better. Uh, usually, it filters out the very bad uh, and ask and sometimes they're very good as well, as we heard uh, today, uh, for, for, some re for a certain reason. But um, to give you an example, Ed Einstein's famous paper has never been peer-reviewed. 
The editor just took the responsibility, talked to another editor, and accepted it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be wouldn't have been published ever. And uh, if you don't, if you are not satisfied that this is an argument, all professional arguments will be considered. Uh, that so kind of thing that this reviewer did not read my paper. It's not going to fly. It's meaningless. What is different for many of them is in manuscript. Professional, it has to be professional for all subjects included, and it could be, so therefore it must be a group effort. Nobody alone can write, nobody understands everything in nanomedicine. That includes me. That's why I have so many helpers and friends and uh, collaborators. It may contain chemistry synthesis and chemical characterization, particle characterization, materials, biologic selection and characterization, in vitro cell biology, pharmacology, toxicology. And we had uh, many different things today. Translational potential, clinical need. So what is primary, because of the interdisciplinary nature, multidisciplinary if you wish, a systemic view and clarity is very, very important. Because you are talking to other people who are not completely on your field. You're not just talking to your experts. If you, talk in, if you talk to your experts, especially in the startup field, that's a very, very small number of readers. Very, very small number of readers. So thank you for your attention. And please ask questions, I will try and answer according to my best knowledge. Thank you. Uh, because we here, the audience is uh, consists of the, uh, 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 people of various experiences. As for me, I, uh, the most important information uh, of this lecture is just to select the appropriate journal, level of journal, and uh, make it published with short speed. Uh, please do not uh, send it nature uh, immediately reject and science immediately reject and cell immediately reject. And then after a while, after three months, the, the paper did not get any review. So that kind of things can happen in uh, every uh, lab. But uh, it's, yep. it's recommendation not to do, not to do exercise that kind of. Thing. And and uh, for the young youngest people, and uh, how can I just to uh, be supervised with the proper documents and the proper manuscript? And is there any question? It is very. Very unique kind of uh, opportunity. Uh, how to publish a, a manuscript in his journal? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I helped him. 